what's up guys and welcome back to my channel i am wearing color which means i am in a good mood you guys are in for a treat today because i'm going to be showing you how to make the pattern for this really cute mini altar neck dress this will possibly be my birthday dress because my birthday is next month so i'm really excited for this project i went ahead to show you how to develop the patterns from my basic bodies i added this really cute ruffle around the hem which is optional you can just keep it like a simple pencil mini dress design but if you like to see how i make this pattern make sure to keep on watching i only did the patterns in this video the sewing will possibly be the next tutorial or whenever i'm able to finish the dress I think I'll end up using about a meter and a half of fabric if you want to line it feel free to do so it just that it's really warm so I don't think I'm going to line this particular dress if you haven't subscribed to my channel already make sure to join the DIY fam so you know whenever I have new videos on the channel every single week give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy pattern and sewing tutorials or if you just like to see my face and make sure to keep on watching up until the end and let's jump straight into this video Before we start with making the patterns, these are the following measurements that you should take into consideration. Just make sure you measure how long you want the dress to be, measure around the dress hem, measure how wide you want that ruffle at the bottom to be as well as around your neck. This is what the dress design looks like. You have the freedom to tweak it or change it in whatever fashion that you like. It's going to have a princess seam in which you take through the dart from the waist and then it goes up to that armhole in the front. The back is relatively similar in terms of shape and design. The following tools is what I'm going to be using to create the patterns for this dress. I have my basic bodies front and back, which I already have a tutorial for and I'll be linking down below. I have my set square and my pattern master, which will really help me get all those crucial curved and straight lines. I have my tape measure for taking down my measurements, my paper scissors, my marker pen, as well as my pattern paper. The first thing we need to do is to duplicate your front pattern because we want to keep our bodies the way it is so we can use it for future projects. I'm just going to have to duplicate that front onto fresh pattern paper, giving some room at the bottom as well as transferring my darts, my bust, waist and hip lines. Next up, I'm going to be making the bodies longer to my desired dress length which is 29 inches. You can make yours longer or shorter just to suit whatever preference you have in mind. I'm just going to make this long enough so I can connect my hip line to the hem. So I went ahead to divide around my knee measurement by four and we're going to be marking this along this horizontal line here and I worked with 9.5 because I wanted that top half to, of the dress to be bodycon style and then the ruffle sort of comes out of this hemline here in a sort of fun and girly fashion. So I'm just connecting that 9.5 point to my hip line or hip point like so and this is what the shape of the dress should look like at this point. So I'm just going in here to raise my front neckline by 2 inches along the front because I want the neckline on the front to be high. I just want to be able to cover that part of the body since we're showing arm and we're showing leg. So I'm just going in to connect that 2 inch rise to the shoulder edge and I'm adding a notch here as well. So this will be our new center front edge and our center front neckline and we would not be working with the lower one. So I'm just going in here to create a one inch collar along our new neckline and this is that collar that will sit at the front and at the back and is what would be high on the neck of the dress. So once I've marked that one inch point all the way across, I'm just drawing in the shape of the collar along this top edge like so. So once that is drawn in place, I'm just going to continue and extend that shoulder line outwards like this and mark that one inch extension this way so I can have a full color piece that goes from the shoulder all the way to the center front. So we have one piece for the front if this is cut on a fold. So once that is done, the next thing we're going to be doing is to shape the armhole, which is what really makes alternate dresses what they are. And I'm going to be dropping my front arm curve by half an inch and we're going to be drawing in that alternate shape that gets rid of the entirety of that shoulder seam. So I like to do this first with a pencil before I go in with my pattern master and my marker pen to draw a more permanent line. 
because that gives me freedom to make any corrections that I want to make. So now that we have that new arm curve in place, we're going to be drawing in our princess dot that connects the waist dot to the edge of this front arm curve or armhole. Because I want it to fit relatively snugly on my body, I'm just going to mark half an inch on both sides of this curved vertical line that we just drew. And we're going to be connecting that half inch point back onto the bust point or that edge of the waist dart. So once that is done, the next thing you need to think about is dividing this front pattern into two separate panels because I want to have two seams on the front and three seams at the back. So this is what the front of the dress plan looks like for the front. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my pattern master and extend that long vertical line that passes through the waist dart all the way to the hem of the dress. So that allows me to have two panels for the front, panel one and panel two. Panel one is going to be cut in a fold. So you have a mid region and then you have two side panels that complete the front. So I'm just going in here to shape this particular part of the waist dart even more because I want it to fit really nicely around this part. So this is around underneath the bust and down to the waist and I'm just covering it in a little bit more from the top of that dart to the waist. So we're not really taking in any extra measurements from the waist or the bust line. We're just taking up about half a centimeter on both sides of that dart. This we will not be tracing out when we're tracing out our panel one and our panel two. The areas crossed out are not necessary or will not be needed. So the panel one will be cut in a fold, like I said earlier on, except you want a seam on center front or if you want like a button or a zip there, then you can add a seam allowance. But I'm just going to go ahead and trace out my different panels as well as my color onto fresh pattern paper. Remember to add your seam allowance of one centimeter on half an inch so that allows you to join pieces together. So that's my front color piece like so. It's looking a bit small and this has me concerned but there's nothing that we cannot fix when it comes to pattern making later on so this is my front color like so this is my panel one i've gone ahead to transfer all of the necessary lines including annotations of how many pieces i'll need to cut and where if there is a fold a line along any edge this is panel two which sits on the sides of the front you need to cut two pieces in your main material and two pieces in your lining if you want to line your dress so once that is done you can go ahead and plan your back patterns is essentially the same steps that we did with the front you need to trace off your back bodies including your darts onto fresh pattern paper and make the length 29 inches so it matches to the front in terms of dress length one important change I made to the center back seam is I added a center back dart which I took in through the waist and this just helps you to get rid of a zip bulge when you fix a zip along that center back seam. So once you're happy with everything in terms of length and dart, I'm just going in to draw in my arm curve, doing it the same way we did for the front. You drop that armhole by half an inch, you connect it to the shoulder edge like so using any sort of curved ruler that you have. You can make this even more sort of racer back style if you wanted to. So I'm just going in here to add um, the princess dart on the back like so and I'm going to go ahead and mark half an inch on both sides which we would be connecting back to the edge of that back dart. I'm just marking it here like so along the curved arm curve and I'm just drawing in that from the edge back into this top side of the waist dart you need to do this for both sides so it helps you to get rid of the extra measurements that would normally sit along this side of the back of your garment so i'm just crossing this out so i remember i don't need to trace this particular ends when i'm tracing off my panels and i'm going ahead to extend that vertical mid dart line downward so this helps me to divide the back into two panels panel three and panel four so now that all of our panels are done, we can go ahead and plan our back collar piece, which would be connected to the front piece along the shoulder. 
the first thing we'll be doing is we're going to be extending that back shoulder line upwards like so and i'm going to be marking one inch upwards along that back neckline so starting from this edge i'm just going to make my way all the way across and then we're going to go ahead and connect these dots together so we have the top edge of our collar piece so i'm just raising that center back edge or seam up this way so we have that edge for the collar as well and i'm just connecting the points together using the curved end of my pattern master and my marker pen so once those are all connected, we know we have this piece ready to be traced off and I'm just going ahead to add a notch. So when I start to connect the collar onto the back of the dress, we know where it should actually fit. I'm just going back in here to refine my lines and I think I just need to get a new pack of marker pens because they just kept dying on me. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm just going to check that the front collar matches the back collar along the shoulders because that's very important and that will show on the outside of your garment. So you need to go ahead and trace out your back patterns onto fresh pattern paper, remembering to add your seam allowance where necessary. So I've traced out my back collar, added my one centimeter seam allowance all the way around because I'm going to be fixing a zip on the center back seam and that zip will either go through the collar or the collar would have like a set of buttons to finish it off at that end. So I've traced off my panel four like so. You need to cut two. I've traced off my panel three. You need to cut two pieces or a pair of each for the back. The last pattern you need is the ruffle which goes on the dress hem. You can either cut this as a mini circle skirt or cut a long rectangle and gather that back into the hem of the top half of the dress. I went ahead to make a rectangle which measured 34 inches long and 10 inches wide and 34 inches is the measurement of around my knee so when I'm cutting this particular piece here I have to ensure that I cut the rectangle twice the length of that my around knee measurement and it is 10 inches wide or 10 inches long if you are looking at it from a vertical direction so these are all of my patterns done i have my front pieces i have my back pieces normally at this point i will go ahead and test my patterns but just from looking at them i noticed that the collar and the arm curve were a bit too high and too narrow so the collar for the front is a bit too high on the neck and I think it might come off too tight and the fabric I'm working with is not a stretchy fabric so this would not be comfortable on my skin. I think the arm curve is too high as well because it goes right into the edge of my neckline and I don't know, I think I need to do something to actually fix this so I can get wear out of this dress. So by the time I was done making all of the patterns and I sort of looked at everything, I realized that I had shaped this particular rise for the front and the back too high. So I curved it from the armhole into the very edge of the shoulder of the original bodies, which I think is going to be too high and too tight on the neck. So I possibly will go ahead and just drop that in. So instead of coming up on the way there, I'm going to bring it in inwards like that and maybe drop the collar piece a little bit lower if you want to go ahead and make a sample just to see what i mean and understand like what i'm trying to explain feel free to do so but i will go ahead and drop this arm curve a little bit lower drop the collar a little bit lower as well and i think this should sit a lot nicer on my body i have really broad shoulders so anything that is too tight makes me uncomfortable and just looks really odd so I'm just going to go ahead and make these changes before I cut my main material with these patterns. So I went back to my plan to make the mentioned corrections for the front as well as the back. I decided to drop the collar pieces. The areas marked in the green pen is the corrected and the new collar pieces I'm going to be working with. I just thought that that would sit a lot more comfortably on my neck. I also made the arm curve come in by, a, by one inch along the top and just join that back into the bottom of that arm curve i did this correction for the front and for the back so once that is done i went ahead to trace out my new collar pieces this is a new front collar 
Thankfully, I noticed this before I actually cut onto my fabric, so I just saved you guys from making the same mistake I did. I went ahead to correct the top end or the arm curve edge of my front pattern pieces as well. I just took them in where necessary so that they match along that dart point and they're not as high on my body when I've actually made the dress. So this I corrected on the two panels, one and two for the front. I went ahead to correct the back patterns as well so that the back comes in a little bit more in terms of the armhole and the collar is dropped as well. So for the back neckline, I just retained the original one and the new collar piece is two centimeters wide instead of one inch that was the original one. So once these are corrected and once my patterns are all fixed and I'm happy with them, I know I feel comfortable enough to either make a little twirl or make a sample just to see how this fits on my body. With that done, all of our patterns are complete and ready to go. These are what they look like at this point in time. I just laid them out flat so I can take another look again to see if I want to make any more changes. But I think I'm happy with it at this point. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned from my mistake and I hope the correction actually was helpful as well. If you did enjoy this video, let me know in the comment section down below. Just know that this pattern is for woven materials and not any type of stretchy fabric. If you did enjoy watching this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up comment all of your thoughts ideas and suggestions down below and i'll see you guys in my next one bye